Do you have a pesky, bloodthirsty ghost on your hands? You know who to call. Ghostbusters! No, no, no. A group of inexperienced teens, of course. Everybody's gonna die. Yes, Netflix has released Lockwood & Co., a television series where teens take on ghosts. Now, if only they could get to the bottom of who's ghosting me on Tinder. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the series, some of its biggest unanswered questions, and where it could take us in Season 2. So make sure to like and subscribe, because I may not always cover the shows you're watching, but when I do, it's amazing. Meet Lucy Carlisle, a runaway hoping to make it big in London as a ghost hunting agent. You got that right, ghost hunting. In the world of Lockwood & Co., a mysterious event known simply as The Problem occurred sometime in the 1980s, altering the history of Earth as we know it. This problem refers to the emergence of ghosts which have somehow made their way into our world. Now, there are a few important things to know about these ghosts. One, they only appear at night, hence why London has a daily curfew. Two, Two, they can only be seen by young people who have what's called talent, the ability to see, hear, or sense the dead. And three, ghosts are split into three types. Type one, the most common and weakest, like shades or lurkers, this type is usually unaware of the living. Type 2 possess limited intelligence, are more dangerous, and may even want to harm the living. And by far the rarest is Type 3. Only two Type 3s are known to ever have existed. These are actual sentient beings, and only the strongest people with talent have the ability to communicate with them. One such person is Lucy. At the start of the season, Lucy has run away from home and joined Lockwood & Co., basically the only agency that would take her in considering she lied on her resume and hadn't completed all of her training. There she hones her skills and gets herself involved in a harrowing adventure involving ghosts, gangsters, and murder. And by the end of the season, Lockwood & Co. are on to their biggest case yet, the missing bone glass mirror, a relic that may answer how these ghosts came to be and offer them a glimpse at the Eternal. It's never explicitly said what the Eternal is, but my guess it has something to do with the afterlife. Now this bone glass is exceptionally dangerous. It was made with the bones of seven tormentors spirits. We learn in episode 6 that not everyone who dies turns into a ghost. If you kill someone, their body isn't necessarily going to become a source, unless you make sure of it. A source is an object or place in which a ghost enters the world, and only when someone living goes through intense trauma do their bodies get attached to these sources. In episode 1, we learn of a ghost named Annabelle Ward, a woman who was brutally murdered. Her source became a ring. The bone glass is a source as well, but as we'll find out later, it's seven sources in one, making it extra dangerous. In episode 7, Lucy and her ghost fighting partner Anthony Lockwood managed to steal the bone glass mirror from a secret auction and throw it into the river where it would be picked up by fellow Lockwood & Co. member George Kareem. Unbeknownst to Lucy and Anthony, George has developed a friendship with Pamela Joplin, who wants to use the bone mirror in the hopes of finding out how the problem started, or at least that's what she tells George. With Anthony and Lucy seemingly falling for each other over the course of the season, George has felt more and more on the outs, and this, combined with this thirst for knowledge, spurs him to go with Pamela and uncover the bone glasses secrets. Meanwhile, Anthony and Lucy read The Confessions of Mary Dulac, a book they stole from the Black Library within the Fitz archives. Marissa Fitz was considered the strongest talent ever to live, and the only one, up until Lucy, to have conversed with a Type 3 ghost. Her company, the Fitz Agency, is England's largest ghost hunting agency and possesses several relics in ancient homes. The Confessions of Mary Dulac are important because it tells the story of the bone glass mirror and a man by the name of Edmund Bickerstaff, an occultist who used witchcraft to experiment on the dead and create the bone glass itself. Remember how I said the bone glass was seven sources in one? Edmund Bickerstaff tortured seven of his patients and used their bones and spirits to craft this occult object. In the illustration found in Mary Dulac's book, Anthony and Lucy find this spiral formation on it, one which George had been drawing all over the kitchen table. In episode 4, while uncovering the bone glass, George briefly gazed into its spiral, making him increasingly obsessed with it. Anthony and Lucy now know George is in danger. With the help of Skull, a Type 3 ghost held in this jar, and former servant of Edmund Bickerstaff, Anthony and Lucy find out that this looking glass isn't a mirror, rather a window 
and that all who look into it are killed. Thus, the two head back to Edmund Bickerstaff's crypt in the hopes they can stop George and Pamela from whatever it is they have planned. In the crypt, George finds Quill Kipps fighting off a ghost. Quill is a member of the Fitz Agency, a rival to Lockwood and Co., and he's considered the best agent in the country, but his fighting here would say otherwise. George has to save him, and we find out Quill is losing his talent. This happens to all use as they get older, they lose the ability to see ghosts. And Pamela quickly holds Quill at knife point, cuffing him, and George is like, who were these cuffs for? Pamela's original plan was to tie George up and have him look into the mirror. She knew something Edmund Bickerstaff didn't when he attempted to use the bone glass over a hundred years ago. He needed a youth with the ability to see the dead, not someone who was older. With Quill now tied up, she no longer needs George, but she doesn't know that Quill has lost his ability. So this makes for a very interesting situation. Meanwhile, Antony teams up with other members of Quill's team to fight off Julius Winkman, a crazed relic hunter who's looking to get back that bone glass they stole from him. Lucy heads off into the crypts to save George. Now George tells Pamela that Quill's abilities have left him, which puts him on the chopping block to witness what happens when you look into the mirror. Pamela's goal here is to have the one who looks into the mirror describe what he or she sees, but before she can go through with it, Lucy appears and offers to save George. She's a far more powerful talent with the ability to see type 3s. If there's anyone who's going to look into that mirror, it should be her. But as Pamela unveils the mirror, Lucy looks away, instead holding up the jar filled with Skull's head. As he looks into the mirror, he tells them those seven spirits haven't made it to the Eternal, but are rather trapped. The bone glass should be destroyed. George, seeing that Lucy is in danger, rams the glass and it starts to break with Pamela drawn to its glow. She looks into it and exclaims it's beautiful before disintegrating. We see these seven spirits escape from the bone glass and head upward, having finally been set free. But that's not the last of their worries. The blast blew apart the chains covering the body of Edmund Bickerstaff. Pamela brought his corpse down here so he could bear witness to her discovery. Normally, iron chains are enough to contain the spirit within, but the blast seems to have blown them off, allowing his spirit to attack. Luckily, Antony comes to save the day after he was just shot by a mysterious figure known as the Golden Blade. Not much is known about him as his character doesn't appear in the novels, but some have speculated he could be Rupert Gale, a master swordsman working with none other than Penelope Fitz. Penelope Fitz is the head of the Fitz Agency and granddaughter of the greatest ghost hunter ever, Marissa. And we do see the two conspiring throughout the season as well as at the end of the episode. With the bone glass destroyed and Bickerstone, Staff's spirit contained, Lucy, Anthony, George, and Quill emerge tired but victorious. The bone glass shards will go to the furnaces and Julius Winkman off to prison. This also puts into question Quill's future. He and Anthony made a bet that whichever team didn't solve the case would have to disband, but Anthony tells him not to worry about it. Since Quill has lost his ability, it's unclear what role he'll play in future seasons. Anthony lies to Inspector Barnes, stating that he didn't get a good look at the man who shot him, likely to hide the fact Lockwood and Co. will be searching for this guy behind Deeprak's back. Deeprak is short for the Department for Psychical Research and Control. As Antony suggests, the Golden Blade is part of something much bigger, and this seems to be where Season 2 is headed. The Golden Blade also knows about the death of Antony's parents. Perhaps he was even involved in that. Not much is known about Antony's parents, however, there are a few clues sprinkled throughout the season. Antony was orphaned at the age of six after his parents passed away. We don't know how they died, but the Golden Blade suggests something nefarious was at play. Their home passed on to Antony and is the only thing he has left of them. This place is all that's left of my parents. His past is extremely painful. He keeps whatever reminded of it behind the locked door in his home. Well, all I can say is I don't really enjoy talking about my past. And that's what's behind that door. The season ends with a cliffhanger with Anthony promising not to keep any more secrets and revealing to Lucy and George what's behind that secret locked door. So what could be behind there? We know it has something to do with his past and is very painful. So my best guess is that it has something to do with his parents, maybe even the ghosts of his parents. Remember that not everyone who dies becomes a ghost. They have to die in a truly traumatic fashion, and it's very likely Mr. and Mrs. Lockwood died in a sudden 
sudden and traumatic way? What if Anthony has kept their sources, which bind their ghosts, locked away in this room? Last but not least is the fate of Skull, who we last saw being forced to look into the bone glass. It seems as though he's survived, but Lucy says he hasn't said anything since. Expect him to make a full recovery in Season 2, as a verifiable Type 3 is a valuable member to have as part of the team. That's it for this video. What did you think of Lockwood & Co? And more importantly, what do you think is behind that door? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThingsToEYT. Until next time, remember... Ghostbusters!